Hello. I had somebody asking me about how to hook the gill batteries up for communication. He does not have the e gill batteries like these up here. So basically, you start at the bottom, you go right to left, right to left, and you do that all the way up. And then when you're hooking then when you're gonna hook up to like I have the can hub and I'm not sure if he does but you keep going right to left on the gill and you would plug this on the right hand side down on the gill okay so your red cable would go in the right hand side of your top gill battery and it don't have to be red I have some white ones and I think I got a couple black ones around here somewhere too so it just has to be the right type of cable so uh, mine the, if I had the gill at the top I would go on the right and bring it into the can hub and then I have the uh, two communication cables and these are white but color don't matter one going to each of these and they go right here into the port and it's a it's a it's right now I can see what it says on this other one here but it's the only one with the right connection and it says RS485 so you plug it into the RS-485 port on your inverter. That lets your inverters and your uh, batteries communicate. So that, that should work doing it with the gill battery just going from the right port on the top battery to the RS-485 can hub if you have if you only have one inverter you just hook it into the RS-485 <laughs> if you have more than one inverter you need to have the RS-485 can hub and then you plug from the right on your top of the, of the older batteries into the can hub and you run two or three or four or however many inverters you have only as long as they're hooked up together see these are they have uh, the sharing cables and everything hooked up so they share the load if you look up here you'll see that they're sharing the load if you do not have them hooked up to where they share the load okay you do not want to hook your communication cable up to them see that one's sharing the load also I do have a inverter this one only does charging of the batteries when you look at the uh, the load it is not sharing any of the load okay it has not got the grid backup coming to it it does not handle any of the load all it does is help charge the batteries Okay, so if you have that hooked up and everything working, 
okay, and you're hooking the solar assistant up, you bring your red wire down to your positive, and you don't have to have, you can hook that. If you only have the gill batteries, like the guy was saying he did, you can hook it up right here on your top battery. And same with your black wire here, okay? You have your black wire going there, same thing. Do the top battery and hook it right there with your, uh, with your uh, battery cable. Now this is all your cable. This goes down to the batteries. This goes up here. And you plug it into the first port. Okay. Like that. With the solar assistant. I have these plugged into the top ones on there. One of them comes up here and it plugs this first board on your inverter it plugs in and this is a this cable is a printer cable it's you you get it at any of the office supplies all it is is a printer cable So this side here plugs into your solar assistant. This one here plugs in right here in that first electronic board. Make sure you line it up and plug it in correctly. Okay. And then it it will do the communication with the state of charge and everything, but it reads it off of the inverter. It is not reading it off the batteries. The only thing that I'm doing by hooking up, and you need to hook it up to the batteries, is I'm powering this unit with, with the two, okay? That's only power in the unit. So, It reads the state of charge and all of that. Okay. See? Okay, it reads the state of charge through the communication with the white. Mine's white. It could be any color. This one here is this one over here is red. And mine runs through the can hub because I have more than one inverter. You, if you have more than one inverter, you need to run it through the can hub. Okay. And then it will show you what, in this case, with the two inverters, It'll show your solar input, okay? If you don't have it hooked up right, you won't get, say you only have your communication hooked up to the one inverter, okay? You won't get your solar input. In order to get your solar input from the second inverter, you have to have everything hooked up right. and. If you have it hooked up with the power sharing type cables, then you'll get 
the readings for both inverters. Okay. Now, I do have my third inverter, and if you notice, there's no power sharing cables, there's no communication cable. Okay, I don't have the communication cable hooked up at the four RS-485 port. And I do not have the printer cable hooked up for the uh, solar assistant. So I get no readings on my solar input from this inverter. All I have for that inverter is power, helping to power or charge the batteries. So, I hope that this clears it up a little bit. I had a viewer asking me about this, and I hope this works for you. But, you know who you are, and this is just trying to help you uh, understand. Now, the solar assistant will not read this third inverter on my system. I do not have it doing the power sharing. I do not have it doing the communication through the CAN hub. I could hook that up and I could turn on the power to where it would help power the house. But I'm, I'm kind of holding that inverter in reserve in case I have one of these go down. Plus, the batteries are only let, with the communication, the batteries are only letting me charge somewhere close to 48 amps. Okay. And the way I understand it, you can charge them at, you know, up to 100 amps. And so, I am charging with an extra 40 amps with this inverter, which puts me up around 87 to 88 amps. And like today, <coughs> we had a nice sunny day, and I charged everything up by two o'clock. So that's my car and my battery. But yesterday was a sunny day also. But the day before yesterday was cloudy and I had a lot lower state of charge and I didn't get everything charged up till about 4 or 4.30. So when you have sunny days in a row and you have everything fully charged, the day before yesterday I did not have my batteries at 100, you know, 99 or 100 percent. If you see there it says 99. Okay. So, some of that, it depends on the weather. And that's why I'm going to add more solar panels. On those cloudy days, and say you're only getting 5, 10, 15 percent, depending on how much sun is making it to your solar panels, you're, you're not going to be able to charge something all the way. But if you have a larger solar array and you're only getting 10%, well, you're going to end up with more charge for your batteries or for the batteries on your plug-in hybrid car like I have. Some people have full electric cars, and same goes for them, you know. They're not going to have as much charge available. So, that's why I have that third inverter set for charging these um, batteries up. I wanted that extra amperage coming in, that way I would get it charged earlier, especially if you end up with clouds rolling in, say in the early afternoon, or you start out with a cloudy day in the morning, you know, you get that extra charge. When we uh, get the rest of our solar panels hooked up, 
hopefully, we'll end up with enough charge even on these partly cloudy or, you know, even the full cloudy days. You know, we'll end up with a higher rate of, uh, state of charge at the end of the day. So, that's basically my communication and why I have it set up the way I do. Hopefully this helps some of you. I, I did use grid power. I had four, three or four cloudy days in a row and I used grid power one night for about, I had eight um, kilowatts one night and four the next, so about 12 kilowatts. And other than that, it was clear back um, March 4th, I believe I used two kilowatts. So, so far for this month, I've used a little bit over 14 kilowatts. And that 11 cents per kilowatt, that's uh, less than $2. So, as long as we can avoid those cloudy days, it ain't so bad. I hope this helps the guy that asked me and anyone else that might be wondering about this stuff. So, thank you. Please like and subscribe.